Mommy. Yes, honey. I had a dream. What was your dream about? When I was at horse riding back classes, and I accidentally forgot to put on my pants, so I had to go to horseback riding class without any pants on. That sounds pretty embarrassing. Yes, it is. We've all had those dreams, or should I say nightmares? The pressure's on. The meeting is starting, and your presentation's blank. The test is about to begin, and you can't find the classroom. Or you're on stage and you have no pants. These subconscious scenarios shed light on our real fears of being unprepared and failing. It's so relieving to wake up and realize it never happened. But what do we do when we're actually faced with a stressful situation and we don't feel prepared? Hi, thank you for joining us on Path and Posture. I'm your host, Mariah Turner, joined by my sisters, Brittany and Sierra Turner. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. You know, I think we can share with our listeners that we have discovered that the earth is flat and we keep falling off of it (laughs) all the time. So despite what you've heard, it's not round. It is flat and we have fallen off several times now. No, um, we're just so thankful that you guys tune in with the content that we push out whenever we push it out because it has just been a season of everything. And uh, and I know you guys, as our listeners, you understand because you have families, you have jobs, you have children and lives just like we do. And so it's wonderful that when you find something you're passionate about, um, like Brittany and Sierra and I with the podcast and with music, that uh, the Lord will multiply your time. And um, if you're faithful and, and, and devoting that time to him, I, we've just kind of seen that. Um, and so here we are on a Monday night. And we just wanted to say hi and drop another podcast for you guys because it's been a while. It's been a minute. It's been a few minutes. All the holidays it's been an passed. Hour. It's been <laughs> an hour. <laughs> Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. So um, we hope you guys are doing well. We've missed uh, just talking and, and relating with you guys. Um, as always, you can drop us an email or find us on Facebook or uh, Instagram. Instagram. If they mm-hmm. want to send us an email, what, 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 what are we doing with that Contact again? at Harmony Roads. Yeah. Dot com. Contact us at Harmony Roads. No, it's just contact oh. at HarmonyRoads.com. Interesting. It's not like a Gmail or anything anymore? No. Oh. We're, official. we're legit. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So we're talking about – well, we started with the dreams thing. I'm curious. I'd love to hear what some of your guys' uh, dreams, nightmares are. Well, this, this happened because it was during the holiday season and Remy – we were gearing up. For New Year's, and Remy was my daughter. She was, was your daughter. Now she is. No, Remy, <laughs> no. Remy, my daughter, came up to me, and she was telling me frequently how she was nervous about school and how she kept having a dream that she is showing up to school without pants. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, I remember her telling me this, and I, and I was just thinking, oh, I've had the exact Everybody same dream. Ha- who has not had that dream? Just. Be real. Like it's come up at some point in your life. I did ask. Uh, that or your teeth falling out of your mouth. Ooh. I've never had that dream. No. <laughs> <laughs> you bite down on something and say, oh, teeth. And they just fall out. No. It's a foreshadowing of my life in like 50 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Well, um, so we're talking about these dreams and the stressful subconscious feelings and then relating it to how we are equipped. Because here on Path and Posture, we talk about the different paths that the Lord may have us on and the posture that we're called to have as we walk those out. Oftentimes, we talk about motherhood, sisterhood, friendships, parenting, uh, being a wife, uh, because that's something that all three of us sisters uh, relate to. Mm -hmm. I know there are so many other categories, uh, but those are just a few that we highlight here on the podcast. So when we talk about we're prepared, we are blessed in the sense that we serve a God, a creator, who we'll get into this a little bit later. Um, He doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of our emphasis on this and that, that feeling of not being prepared, how real it is, which jokingly, you know, we talk about it with the dreams, but it is very real. 
and um, how we have peace because we serve the Prince of Peace and he equips us and his Holy Spirit's our comforter. And that gives us hope, right? Yes. So um, I do want to go back to the dreams. Um, What's really funny, so as many of you may know, I have a background in television news. And anyone who has worked in television news is familiar with the to- the term a news mare, a which news is mare? it's a news mare, <laughs> which is when you have a nightmare, but it's all news related, whether that's you slept through your clock, oh my god, and you're late on air, or you're on air and then the prompter goes out and you have no script, or you're not dressed on live television. There's you know you're any- wearing green on the green screen. Oh yeah, it's happened. That's that's been a reality for me. <laughs> uh, there's all these different things, news mares. And so I have had several news mares. And then I think about how in real life I have that stress, the same kind of panic I did when I was working in television and I'm out like on a live shot, right? And we're just live reporting. If I don't have a brain map of the things that I want to talk about, I immediately get to be super grump because I don't feel prepared and I'm nervous. I am just not uh, confident in my ability because I don't know where I want to go with something, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel like you almost kind of need a map. You, well, need, you need some direction to know what you're going to talk about. Otherwise, the camera's going to go live and you're like, Ugh. Well, Brendan always tells me, because I'm more of the organized chaos kind of type. I like to fly by the seat of my pants. I love the pressure of of just last minute things. I, I just, I like it. I thrive for the most part. There's been a couple of chaotic bits, but Brendan always says, Providence favors the prepared. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I think that there's some truth there. Mm-hmm. Um, because you want to be prepared in the way, like you want to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. So when something, when things hit the fan, you want to know who God is, right? So Mm -hmm. you've prepared yourself in that way. You've studied, you showed yourself approval, you know, and you want to say, Hey, I know who Jesus is. I know who God is in my life. So when things do hit the fan, at least I can fall on that. Yes. And so like that is prepared in some way. So, And, and I feel like preparedness is also, um, a state of mind and and your heart. The Lord sees your heart and he knows your willingness and and your desire to bring him honor and bring him glory. And I believe that he meets you there. I've recently started a new Bible study format on Wednesdays at my church. And whereas the old studies used to be, check the box, you know, fill in the blank. Jesus was the blank of God. You know, it's super easy, things like that. Sunday school answers. You're like, oh, this is the best Bible study ever. It's, I know all the answers and I'm winning. The new format is they give you the passage for the day uh, and then you have to observe and interpret. You cross-reference, you analyze. and I love that. And then you apply and you pray. And there's like 10 blank boxes that you just fill in. And what I have found is when I'm sitting in front of this passage, it's so easy to get stressed out or just sit there and be like, I don't know what to say. I I don't know. I don't feel the spirit moving. It just starts with a question, just writing a question. And my pages I have found will either be really blank Or I go down these rabbit holes of, I just can't stop asking questions. Mm -hmm. Why did they use this word? Why why were they standing on the shore of this lake? And what is that lake like today? And you you just get lost in it. And so I either spend a little bit of time or I'm like, I got to wrap this up because I have other things I need to do today. And so it's just really been interesting to get there on Wednesday morning and to see what all the other women, whatever tangents or rabbit holes they went down and to talk about it. And where I thought when we gathered together, I would be really just struggling to fill our hour time together with conversation, it has just been overflowing Mm -hmm. with nonstop conversation. And so I feel like, you know, the Lord, he knew my heart that I I want these women to be just enriched by our study time and uh, take away something from our time in the word. And it has just been um, amazing. And I know it's none of my doing because I know how I'm like, and I showed them my blank pages this past Wednesday. I'm like, look at this. It's okay (laughs) if you don't have hardly anything written. And so I just wanted to encourage them. And I want to encourage you guys too, when you sit down and it's, you know, that's just one of the things that I feel like can be stressful is your time with the Lord. And it's not supposed to be stressful. It's just a relationship, right? You're just coming to meet with him and say, Hey, 
what I'm, I'm giving you the stillness and in, in, in a world of every single distraction you can think of. I want to be with you yeah. for these few minutes. I don't want to stress out about it, about what, how am I going to hear from you? What is it going to be like? Da, 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 da. Just be in peace and in patience. And um, I feel like in my time with the Lord, he won't necessarily, or he hasn't necessarily spoken in that moment of silence, but just devoting that few minutes almost just kind of resets your mind to a point where when you get up to walk away and do all the other things throughout the day, you've let him into the space of your heart mm-hmm. so that he'll speak to you because he's already there because you mm-hmm. spent that time with him. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. You spent I, that time with him. I saw something interesting on the internet um, a couple weeks ago where it was saying how, you know, I don't know how theologically accurate this is, but it's just something interesting to think about um, how God meets women in the Bible, like where they are, whereas like Moses has to go meet God on a mountain, like he meets the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. He meets um, Sarah while she's like, you know, kneading bread. Mm -hmm. And so while they're doing these everyday activities, that's where God meets them. Whereas these men, you know, have to go you know, like I said, climbing up a mountain or uh, doing something manly. <laughs> That's very interesting. But uh, so, you know, when you said that we uh, we spend our time with God and then he speaks to us, you know, when we're doing something, when we move on to something else, like that's when I feel like God speaks to me is, you know, I'll be putting something away and then all of a sudden, like, I feel like the Holy Spirit like reach me and and speak to me about something that I had previously prayed about. Like mm-hmm. I feel like he'll he just has these quiet moments mm-hmm. where he's just like, oh, here it is. Yes. So in in terms of the sense of preparedness, you know, we had mentioned God doesn't call the equipped; He equips the called. I, I wanted have another to, way of saying that too. Yeah. It's God isn't asking you to be able. Mm-hmm. He's asking you to be faithful and willing, which kind of speaks into your, you know, if you're faithful like and giving said, I'm willing. those quiet moments, mm-hmm. that's where he's going to move. And sometimes we have to understand that maybe not is an answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Like it's kind of like the, from yes, that song, no, gratitude, maybe. maybe not, not today. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'll provide in other ways. And so yeah. I love that song. It's gratitude by Nicole Norman. Mm-hmm. And um, I just have come to, like reconcile with the fact that God, I am not God. I do not know his ways. I, and I need to know that his will for me hasn't been completely revealed to me and that it's not always what I think it's going to be. And so as prepared as I can be for one path, God may direct me on another path. And the most prepared I can be is finding my joy in him and knowing that he's my rock and that whatever card castle I build, I call it them card. And like, I call everything in life a card castle. Um, because it's like, that's ultimately what everything is, what, you know, that we build with our hands compared to the rock that God is. And so whatever card castle I build, when it falls, I'm prepared to look to him. I don't know what state my mind's going to be. My heart's going to be, I don't know if I'm going to be having pants or what, but um, skirt, <laughs> <laughs> a skirt. Um, but I know that he holds me ultimately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, he's going to hold you with or without the pants. <laughs> I wanted to read Hebrews 13, 20 through 21. It says, may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And this just kind of spoke to me in the sense of if we moved based on our feelings instead of faith, like what would that look like? That, that's not at all what we're called to do. And our feelings are so fickle. Mm-hmm. Um, we may, it's, I, I saw on crosswalk.com, they said, we may not feel worthy of God's call, but never, nevertheless, he makes us complete in every good work that aligns with his will. And he equips us with whatever is needed to carry out his divine purpose. You do it afraid. Mm-hmm. You do it feeling ill-equipped. You do it feeling like you're not prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, and he meets you in that. And 
in that act of faith, that step of faith, not feelings, because you do it afraid, you're feeling afraid, you're feeling not prepared. But in that step of faith, that's when I feel like we we are met with the divine mm-hmm. and that he intercedes on our behalf and the Holy Spirit comforts us. And we do something that is not at all within the power of our will. And this reminded me of all the stories in the Bible that were given where um, God uses the foolish to humble, right? And God Mm -hmm. used all these small, meek things to do great things. It reminds me of uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. Paul tells us to remember, brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. And so that feeling of not being equipped and not being prepared, it amplifies the ability of God to be glorified because you're not there. Yeah. And so when people see you do something, or they may even know how you feel as you're doing it, and they see how incredible you've done it, there's so much glory in, in, in what God is given um, through that act of obedience. And um, Well, another Corinthians to go alongside of that is, um, you said sent. 1 Corinthians, well, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it just reminded me of when he say, when Paul's saying, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm-hmm. So it's it's in those weaknesses that uh, Christ's power is is shown. Magnified. And, and yeah, I, magnified. I think it's interesting that you brought up when, you, you know, not feeling worthy um, in the in it while you're unprepared, right? Mm-hmm. And so, one of the things that I try to remind people is that your worth and your value are 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 um, tailored to the fact that you have a mago day. You are created in His image. Mm-hmm. No matter what circumstance, no matter what feeling you are in, no matter how unprepared you are, no matter how prepared you are. Nothing will change the fact that your value is is based on the fact that you were created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And so you moving or not moving or being used by the Lord or in a season of waiting and quiet, your value is not being changed. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think people sometimes get hung up on the fact that if they're not moving, they're, the world is leaving, maybe the world is leaving, yeah, leaving them behind. That's what the world does, but um, God doesn't. And God is not leaving them behind no matter where they are in their season, um, your value and your worth does not, is not depend, dependent on how equipped you are or how prepared you are. Mm -hmm. You are created in the image of God, period. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, thinking about the passage from first Corinthians where God's choosing the foolish things to shame the wise, the weak things to shame the strong, the lowly and the despised to nullify the things that are, I think about how when it came to Jesus, (laughs) He's the prime example of the savior of the world. And everyone was expecting this mighty man, (laughs) soldier on a horse, you know, stamping out Rome. (laughs) And he's this Nazarene, right? (laughs) And he's like, you know, giving these sermons about shepherding and all. And people are like. kind of like reverse psychology. Yes. (laughs) Shepherds are the low of the low. Yeah. Well, think about when he was born. The lowest of the low go to proclaim the good news of his birth. Mm -hmm. The shepherds are telling people. And then when he died and he rose again, the women are the ones to proclaim the good news of his resurrection. Yeah. God uses the outcasts of society to bring the greatest and best news to society. And society doesn't want to hear them, but they have truth on their lips and they are just chosen and God equips them. And it's just incredible to me. And I think, of course, how could you forget the example of Moses? who couldn't speak well, he was not eloquent, and he fought with God when God said, go, go talk to Pharaoh. And he's like, I'm not, uh, no. Um, <laughs> That's exactly how, what so he said. So <laughs> much so that finally God, I mean, God promised him, he's like, I will, I will loosen your tongue, I will speak through you. Trust me. 
I uh, feel like he made an accommodation, which I don't know why God does what he does, but he accommodated Moses and all his begging and pleading, and he let Aaron go with him, and Aaron did the speaking. Mm-hmm. But think about what it would have been like if Moses had just listened to God. I know. You know, and if he had gone with God's, you know, plan. I feel like the Bible is full of those. If he had just. If you just. Right? So it's a hindsight kind of 2020. We look, we read all of these stories and we're like, if he had just, if yeah. he had just. But if I think. David had just. I know. I think if the Jonah if he had, had just, just is, you know, is interwoven in that sovereignty. Right. So God already knew that was going to happen. And he knew that these people were not going to be prepared. But he, God is always prepared. He's mm-hmm. never surprised. God's like, well, he's I gracious. Am just. He's gracious in that, in the sense that he knew the fear that Moses had within his heart of being that public speaker, yeah. right? Absolutely. And, and he gave him and that. And here we are talking about, stutter. you know, God is with you. <laughs> Do it afraid. It's okay. Yes, but we also serve a loving and gracious God. And in this example, he said, okay, fine, Moses, fine. You know, my will will still be done, but you have to still be there. We'll let Aaron talk. And, um, I mean, and he knew that Aaron was going to be there from the beginning. Yeah, and so it's like, you, just, uh, you just have to wonder well, why he, has, he, had he makes exceptions and accommodations whenever he does. And well, it just shows that his, I mean, his purpose isn't dependent on one person. Um, and like his will will be fulfilled. Um, and so Aaron had a purpose as much as Moses, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and so God will use your gifts and he'll fill in for, the places where you lack, um, whether that be through resources or just through the strength, the strength you need to get through it. And I think that when the Bible shows you those conversations back and forth, no God, yes, no God, yes. I think, <laughs> yes, like when did Sarah laugh. laughed, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's great. And I think it just shows you how conversational God is, right? Yeah. That He. He's like, I already know the end of this conversation. It's kind of like a parent, right? That's telling you, it's like, you need to go to bed. I don't want to go to bed, but you need to, like, you ultimately know the child is going to go to bed mm-hmm. because your, your body's just going to give out. And, but you're engaging in this conversation for a reason, trying to bring logic and this person to a, you know, a, an area of, of, uh, understanding. Yes. So. So my next and and final point is I want to talk about how do we prepare ourselves or how do we try to feel prepared? Uh, We know that God will meet us and he will ultimately be the one that that brings us into the confidence and help us to be the finisher of whatever task it is that seems daunting. But how do we get to a a state or at least get in the mindset of feeling prepared or at least on the road to being prepared? And so I thought, obviously, prayer. It's underestimated. It's people say, oh, all you can do is pray to everything. That is everything you can do is pray. You're communing with the God of the universe. You're spending time with him in prayer. And you know what? Our friend recently just brought to my attention how prayer meetings and churches are disappearing. Mm. Uh, not So it's not even just praying with yourself or by yourself or, you know, but also find people to pray with. Mm-hmm. We are losing that. And it's, I'm, I'm, it's becoming kind of a daunting thing. Thing on my heart, uh, realizing that we are losing community prayer and not just like, let's pray over this food, but like actual, mm-hmm. let's get on our knees as a community. Austin's always bugging me to do more prayer time with him. And by the time we, you know, get around to doing it, we tuck the kids in and it's like, we're exhausted. So like we fall asleep, like in bed, like praying, praying talking to so Jesus. So tonight <laughs> when all the kids were upstairs praying, he's like, okay, we're both awake right now. Let's just pray. And so we did in the kitchen. We just sat there and we just prayed together. And it was very refreshing in the sense that I'm like, okay, it was really nice meeting with God right right then because mm-hmm. it didn't feel like an obligation. We just said, okay, like, we, we, we want to talk to him right now. And we're both awake. And it's not like we're in the groggy first hours of the morning or the exhausted last hours of the day. Yeah. Um, it was fully awake, fully alert, fully fed de- and devoting just that moment. Yeah. Um, and it was spontaneous. Mm-hmm. Um, just like you pick up a phone and call someone, say, Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Um, and so it was, it felt really good. I know it's not all about how it makes you feel, but it felt really good. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, it brings you a peace and that peace is sourced through, through God. Um, when it comes to like feeling prepared though, you know, that goes alongside, you know, unpreparedness, I think goes alongside anxiety and, uh, you know, I've been speaking a lot lately, telling telling others about um, my 
struggled with anxiety as a child. I had just really plagued with, with anxiety. Um, it, when we go into it, my, I, my immune system weakened, I caught Bell's palsy and half my face was paralyzed. It was just taking over my life, um, as a child. And my mom, you know, she really helped me, um, it, overcome that struggle, uh, where now I can, I can really say, uh, that, in a, if, if we're looking at anxiety as mental health, like that's something that I believe I have been healed of. I'll have anxious moments, but I don't let um, my life be uh, overrun by anxiety. And something that um, helped me was just helping my, I always say that I needed some a physical reminder of the faith that I have in my heart. And so for me, that was writing down my prayers and putting them in a box called my worry box, where every time I, would, I was worrying about something or anxious about something, I would write it down, pray about it, put it in the box. Once I put it in the box, I couldn't, I couldn't take it back. I gave it to God. So, you know, over the years of of doing that, um, it allowed me to have a firm foundation of constantly surrendering those worries, even multiple times to God. And so now, you know, especially as a parent, there are many things that I could, I could choose to be very anxious about. Um, and, uh, but right now I feel like when it comes to things that make me anxious or things I feel unprepared about, the only thing that I The only way that I can view it mentally is I have to do everything that I objectively can do, make a checklist, check off everything that I, that I can do objectively. And these are the steps that I can take. Uh, if I'm worried about something about my child, their health, I look into finding a good doctor, do all the research I can make that appointment. And that's as far as I can go before I wait for that appointment. And then and then I just take it one step at a time. And in between those steps that I can do is that constant surrendering to God through prayer um, while he is, he is working in my waiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, when you are anxious or when you feel unprepared, a lot of people are like, are quick to say, let it go. <laughs> and we had talked with this uh, recently with a friend. And we kind of came to the conclusion that when people say that, you know, it's important for the receiver the, you know, those who are receiving that, that advice graciously to know that you have to let it go somewhere. So we, you know, as Christians, as believers, we choose to let it go at the cross, at the foot of the cross. Mm-hmm. We choose to, and we, we, we visualize that's where we let it go. We don't just like let it go for us to grab it in five minutes again. No, we put it at the foot of the cross and that cross means something to us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so preparing ourselves, we have prayer, The next thing I thought of was spending time in the word. So it's like you have prayer, you're meeting with God, you want to hear from God, you're talking with God, but spending time in his word, you're, you're getting to know his character. Uh, You're reading all about, it's like his journal, right? It's, but his words are alive and uh, none of them will pass away. That's what we're told. And so it's important to study his word. um, And that helps us to feel prepared uh, and that we, we know, we get to know him better. Well, when, when you study the word of God, you can bring that into your prayers because Mm -hmm. God is faithful to his promises. Mm -hmm. So bring the promises of God to God Mm -hmm. and say, God, this is what you promised, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, help this be shown in my life or help me see how this fits in my life. Or, you know, when you pray the word of God, he'll answer to the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. The last thing I kind of thought about, um, if, if you haven't given a thought to it, we've kind of put a emphasis on this in our lives. It's apologetics. Uh, it's studying the word and giving an answer to what you believe and why you believe it. Um, and so it's important to know the different worldviews that are all out there around you. Um, and when you don't feel prepared, just to recognize, okay, is it, am I making this about me in this moment? What kind of worldview am I, am I embracing? embracing? Is, it, is, it, is it the me worldview? Am I thinking God's like a magic genie that's going to help me to get my will and what I want done? Or, or are you actually living and embracing the Christian worldview, which is a life of service and worship to God? Biblical worldview. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Biblical. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Cause
because we use as uh, Christians, we use for our moral standard, the Bible is our moral standard. And so we make choices and create our worldview that surrounds that standard. I thought of first Peter three fifteen, but in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you yet do it with gentleness and respect. And so that's what we have been doing as we've been studying, uh, ways to communicate our biblical belief, uh, to the world around us because it's under fire. It's countercultural. It's against the grain. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So, and we need to know why we believe. And so when it comes to feeling unprepared, I'd say that's probably a strong category for a lot of people is feeling unprepared and giving a reason for their faith. Yeah, that's good. It's daunting. It is. So apologetics came to my mind. Um, and not that it's it's going to uh, supplement the Bible or no, take the a, place of the lens. Bible. It just, um, it's a, yeah, a lens. I think it's a great way to look at it. Um, and it's it just complements the Bible. It helps you explain what you believe. Mm -hmm. Your faith, why you feel certain ways or why you um, believe certain things that, you know, you, you have historical evidence and, and testimony and exhibits that come beside your, you know, the, the reason why you live the way you do. Well, heresy is nothing new under the sun. So um, <laughs> you, okay. you have, it's an heresy. you have, you, you have the wisdom of all of the, uh, the church behind you and how they dealt with her- heretical claims. And, oh gosh. Yes. And There's, so uh, we're not reinventing the wheel here. What's the verse, uh, follow the ancient path. Don't know. It's in Jeremiah. It's a, uh, it's, but I, I love that verse because it just reminds me how many of, how many voices came before me. Mm. And, uh, how many lives were lived before me and she's, you know, we have the ability to see, especially with so much information at the palm of our hands, we have the ability to figure out these people, the apostles, the saints, those that have been recognized as people that live, um, you know, devoted lives to, to Christianity. Oh um, yes. Jeremiah six sixteen. This is what the, this is the new international version. Um, this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is and walk in it yeah. and you will find rest for your souls. Oh, I love that verse so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's so true though, because you find that you find rest and peace knowing that somebody, somebody's done this, somebody's been there, somebody has asked God this. And God has answered this way, or God mm. has answered that way. And don't you guys love history? <laughs> it's <laughs> for you. Uh, <laughs> don't erase it. Don't erase it. Study it so we don't make the same mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I am just so thankful that we spent time just chatting about the word. I pray that it also just um, bolsters your faith and gives you confidence. Uh, to know that you don't need to be prepared all the time, have a heart that's longing and willing to serve and be be prepared and God will meet you there and prepare you. He will equip you and he will comfort you. Um, And you see that time and time again throughout scripture. So if you are looking for an example, there's plenty of examples right there in the word. Dive in and uh, be reassured that you serve a God who is with you and he is for you and not against you. So I'm going to say a prayer. And we hope you guys have a blessed week. And, you know, we're going to try to navigate and not fall off the face of the earth well, again. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Sierra's having a baby. Oh, yep. We didn't – I don't think we ever announced that. Oh, yeah. I'm pregnant. And she's like, <laughs> having a baby in like a couple of weeks. I'm, so, no, I'm, like tomorrow. I'm 37 weeks pregnant now. So like 37 and a half. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for these blessings. Yes, so, my third boy. Yes. So, wow. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm the queen. So, <laughs> yeah. We uh, – you know, we're going to – Aim for one a month, like we did when we first. Actually, we did two a month with during COVID. Wow, we were we were home. We were yeah. we were home. We <laughs> yeah. had nothing so more we, wonderful to we do. Were, I am I am more adamant about doing one a month, and we will do one a month because I like to push. Speaking yes. of preparedness, this, that's also something I feel like I struggle with when it comes to this podcast. Is you're like, let's do a podcast, and yeah, I am I don't have my whim. brain map. I don't have so anything. I have learned Mariah these this last I need season, a script or and just I want to help her. It's going to be fine. About- it's going to be fine. Yeah, no, we'll be good. Pray, <laughs> pray for me. Pray for me. Uh, okay, let me pray for you guys. Father God, uh, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that it is alive and that uh, none of it will pass away, Father. 
Uh, I thank you that your word is what is holding us and sustaining us, um, that you spoke the world into existence, and that is why we're still here today is because your word is alive. Thank you, Father, that you know the hearts and minds of each and every one of us um, and that you are for us and not against us. We've chosen to serve your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, in a life of service and worship, there are times where we feel ill-equipped. We don't feel prepared. We don't feel like we have an answer. We don't feel like we have direction. Um, And we're nervous. We're afraid. And God, I thank you that we're human and that we feel these things. And that you are strong enough to help us to do it afraid. And you are uh, just fatherly enough to bestow upon us so much grace in that you equip us so that we are no longer um, nervous or ill-equipped or unprepared. Um, You you fill in the gaps. You always do. Um, You're a good and gracious God. And Lord... I pray that each and every one of us would take confidence knowing that, as we always say, there is no plan B. There's always been plan A. Yes, within plan A, there's free will. Just like Moses, he fought with God and God said, okay, well, here's Aaron. You're still going to go, Moses, but here's Aaron. He's going to help you. Um, you You give us free will, so thank you for that. Thank you that you're not this puppeteer in the sky who's just taken over our lives, but you love us so much that you give us a choice. Um, and so, Lord, thank you for that choice that we can choose to serve you or, or choose to sit in fear and sit back. I pray that you'd help us to run forward in service and run forward in worship um, to give you all the glory. Lord, we are fools a lot of times. And I pray that we would magnify your glory in that because we are not equipped and we are not prepared and we are not the smartest and may not have the best track record, but you will get glory uh, through all that because mighty things will be done for your kingdom. And people will say, how in the world is that possible? And we say, but God, it's because of God that all things are possible. So Lord, we lift up these truths and um, we just thank you for meeting us tonight. And uh, we pray that you would watch over your word to see it performed in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.